have only written on the iPad Pro for the last two weeks. I purchased the Smartfolio directly from Apple and I did find it a little challenging, but there were other things that I liked. So let's talk about whether or not this is a replacement for your laptop and also just in general, whether or not I think it's worth buying. best-selling co-author of the Snow and Her Seven Seals series and on this channel we talk all about romance writing specifically for newbie and aspiring romance authors. So if this sounds like you or something you might be interested in make sure to hit the subscribe button below. I post new videos every Monday. Now I wanted to try out the iPad as my only writing device because I know a lot of people are wondering whether or not they should get the iPad instead of a MacBook Air or if it can totally replace their laptop instead of having to purchase both. So when it comes to price, for sure, the iPad Pro was the winner because altogether I purchased the Pro, which was the more expensive one because it's larger, but I do like the larger screen. I purchased the Smart Folio from Apple as well as the pencil and with tax and everything that ran me almost about 1800 versus the MacBook Pro, which again, I do know you can buy less expensive ones. In fact, the MacBook Air is probably the same price or less than the iPad Pro, but the MacBook Pro cost me about $4,200 because I did upgrade the memory, the processor, and the video card because I primarily use it for video editing. So for sure, the iPad Pro wins on price. The next criteria was weight. This altogether is about two pounds. The MacBook Pro is four pounds. So for sure, the iPad Pro won on that. Plus it's easier to carry around in your purse and just to hold it around. Although the MacBook Pro, I would say is pretty thin and equivalent if you don't mind those extra two pounds. The next is battery life. They are actually both equal. They each last for 10 hours. Hours, so that was kind of a wash. Third criteria is storage and honestly they both have file folders. It is much easier to navigate the file folders in the MacBook Pro but when we're talking about writing your Word files all of mine are in the cloud and even if they weren't in the cloud Word files take up maybe you know 12 kilobytes. I mean they're tiny you don't need any storage space for either of those but I would say MacBook Pro for the win because it's easier to navigate. The fourth criteria is the keyboard. Now the smart folio, I know a lot of people complained about this keyboard and actually it didn't bother me. I liked it. I wouldn't say I loved it, but the keyboard on the MacBook Pro was better. So definitely the MacBook Pro for the win. The criteria was how well or how easy it was to use Google Docs. And for sure it was super hard to use Google Docs on the iPad Pro. I don't know why it just didn't act the same. And it was hard to move the document around to copy and paste to do any sort of form formatting versus the MacBook Pro, obviously the winner, it was much easier. The other software that I use is Ulysses and that was a wash because it is easy to use them on both systems and they did sync up in the cloud. So I didn't have to worry about trying to save files or worrying about version control. Seventh criteria was different writing apps and obviously the iPad wins because you can download any apps that you want and those are usually for mobile and obviously you don't have those on your MacBook Pro. So overall, after using this for two weeks, I think this is probably a definite no for writing. I much rather prefer the MacBook Pro, even though it is a little heavier to carry, it's just much more convenient and easier to type on and in general to find things that I need. And if I need to do other things like use Photoshop or do video editing, Editing, that is obviously the machine to use. But do I think this is a good investment? For sure, if you enjoy using the iPad Pro specific apps, which are GoodNotes or OneNote, because I do a lot of digital planning, I create digital planners, and in fact, if you want, the May digital planner did come in an iPad Pro version for GoodNotes, if you want to check that out, uh, as well as I honestly just use this a lot just to watch TV in different places in the house, so that's a big plus, as well as using this as a second monitor when I do webinars on the MacBook Pro so I can make sure that it's working when I'm live streaming 
or that people are able to get in, see, and hear me. So let's just recap price. Obviously, the iPad Pro is less expensive than a MacBook Pro. Second is weight. This is much lighter. The third is battery power, and that was a wash because they're both about the same. Fourth is the keyboard, and for sure the MacBook Pro was easier to write on, although I didn't hate the Smartfolio. I thought that was still great too. The other criteria is Google Docs, which is what I use for editing, and that just wasn't working very well on the iPad. Works perfect on the MacBook Pro. Ulysses though, if that was my primary writing tool, then that works seamlessly between the two devices. The seventh is writing apps iPad Pro for the win because it holds mobile apps. And do I think it was worth it? For sure, if you're going to use it for digital planning or to watch TV or as a second monitor to check your live streams. All right, let me know in the comments below. Are you thinking about getting an iPad or an iPad Pro or had you already have one? How have you found it? Maybe you love writing with it and not with your laptop. I hope everyone's having a very productive high word count day, whether or not you are on your iPad or on your laptop. And remember, if you want to check out digital planners for the iPad, I do have a free digital planner for May. So check the link below and you can download that. And it is an a planner made specifically for authors, so it does track word count, habit trackers, writing goals, and other writing-related events. All right, I'll see you guys next week. Bye.